right, I want to welcome uh, KB, the Bengal Bueller, to the show for the first time. You are a very, very talented martial artist. What is going on, man? Oh, thank you very much, man. Uh, not much is going on right now. I'm just getting ready for my next fight, and uh, that's about all that's consuming my life at the moment. <laughs> no, I hear you, man. Uh, fighting is absolutely a full-time uh, full time gig. When, when you get to the level that you're at, of course, you're fighting Cody Cron at Unified MMA 37 coming up at the end of the month on the 24th. But, uh, you know, how is everything going besides that, man? I saw a couple of your other interviews here. It, it looks like you're a pretty well-rounded individual. Uh, yeah, man, everything is going, uh, is going well. The most, the big thing that I'm focused on is when I'm this active is just ensuring that I'm having a continued progression. So the training has stayed the same, but it's just adding new layers to my game and ensuring that each time I come out, I'm a new and improved version of myself. For sure. I saw that you're the advanced striking coach at the Hayabusa Training Center. I mean, how does one get to be, I mean, that's pretty awesome, man. I mean, <laughs> how did you get there so fast? Um, well, my uh, uh, my instructor, Luke Harris, uh, who's the, the head jiu-jitsu coach at, at Hayabusa Training Center, saw it in me that I had the aptitude to be able to teach. And I always I always felt like I kind of had a, a knack for the striking game. It's very little actually formalized instruction. It's only it's only in the last little bit where I started really formalizing my striking training, and uh, it's it's even it's itself proved improved in leaps and bounds. But I always felt like I had a knack for the striking. And uh, Luke gave me the opportunity to be able to teach, and uh, now it's awesome, man. I can I can take what I know, the knowledge that I have, and uh, ingratiate it into some of my students. So I'm really happy to be able to do that. You're obviously a very uh, well-rounded fighter, man. As I said, you're very talented. You're, uh, in my opinion, you're you're probably one of the two or three best unsigned by the UFC middleweights out there. Uh, so it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. But you mentioned you're striking, but the last two wins you've actually finished by submission. Just you know, adding to the fact that you are a complete well-rounded fighter. Do you do you spend more time working on your grappling, being that you feel that your your striking is kind of uh, further further along? Well, the the thing is, is that um, when I took like a a four year almost hiatus from MMA during that whole time, I still loved the. I loved training, so I never really stopped training. I still trained as if I had a fight coming up. But that training was almost completely tailored towards the ground game. I was doing like jujitsu, jujitsu, jujitsu nonstop. And then I still liked competing, so so I just kept competing in jujitsu. So at the beginning, jujitsu was like my shield. I used it like defensively to avoid avoid the ground, but you know, now my shield's become my sword, and I can I can use it to submit people. Yeah, as we've seen in your last two fights, man. I mean, uh, you the Darce choke, and then the North South before that, and you've got a decision, and you've got finishes. So you know, you can do everything. There's no doubt. Has there been any talks with the contender series? Uh, you know what? Somebody uh, actually brought it up to me that I was rumored to be on the the contender series. But um, that's awesome. That's amazing. I, that's wow. <laughs> but um, my biggest. Uh, my biggest concern right now is, is just cultivating a wealth of experience. I want to ensure that, you know, I don't just go to the UFC. I want to go and I want to become a champion. I'm, I'm not just, I'm not just here to just say I did it. But for that, for that matter, like I want to ensure that when I do take that, take that dip, that I'm the most experienced ready fighter I can be. For sure. And that, that speaks a lot to your mindset too, because I know, you know, you, you see it all the time where guys kind of, uh, you know, they get put on that stage and, you know, to to be nice, it, they may be there a little bit sooner than they should be. But you're kind of taking the opposite approach, and uh, yeah, hats off to you, man. Because you, you know, you're you're uh, only 27, right? Yeah, you're tw you're 27. Yes, I'm 20. I'm 27. I just think of it as as this. So you got to like uh, a lot of people don't understand that like um, a lot of a lot of fighters have a, a wealth of competitive experience in a lot of other avenues than just MMA. So the, some some of these people have thousands of jujitsu matches. Uh, boxing fights, kickboxing fights, and and that adds up. That does matter. And uh, for myself, I, I look at myself. I'm, I'm relatively inexperienced. Like yes, I know I have the aptitude and the ability, but uh, I I want to I want to have my I want to take the take the time to let my story bloom and and get that competitive experience. No, I feel you. You're six and zero. Have did you did you have an amateur career? I did. I have one fight. Um, I wanted to have more, but my coach, my coaches at the time just uh, told me to go pro mm. and, uh, and then that, that's what I did. But yeah, yeah, I just, um, I, I went pro right away. 
Yeah, well, it's worked out for you, man. So, uh, you know, they must have. They thank must you, have, man. Thank you. Yeah, they, they must have seen something in you. Uh, you know, I was, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I was watching part of the interview that you did with James Lynch, a super cool guy. One of the things you said in there, man, it really struck home with me because I was the same way. You mentioned when you hit the workforce before fighting, it was just. Uh, you didn't, you, you know, these people, they weren't bad people, but you just, they weren't like you, you know, you, it just, it wasn't, it didn't feel right. And I felt the same exact way many times out there in the workforce, man. Uh, but, but what kind of, uh, what kind of work were you doing? Um, I was, uh, so I was working as an accountant at one of the, the big four auditing firms in the world. Okay. And, uh, you can, you can imagine like <laughs> what that, that corporate lifestyle is like. I mean, I just went to work every day. I felt like my tie was a noose. I didn't, I, I didn't like the the environment at all. It was, it was suffocating, and I felt like I was doing myself the biggest injustice of my life by not pursuing this with with all my energy. Yeah, no, man, I, I hear you, man. It's I I had I had made a similar choice a, a few years back, you know, in my life, which way I wanted to take it, and uh, it's it's a scary thing, man. But uh, you know, ultimately, uh, you're happier, right? Yeah, you have to take. Um, I think as people, you got to take into account that. You know, you are who you surround yourself with, and if you're every day surrounded by people that you you uh, you can't really see eye to eye with or can't even have a an enjoyable conversation with, then maybe you know maybe that avenue of work is not for you. Yeah, and that's what it was like for me. It was it was just I felt like my life was was black and white at that moment. Like during the day, I was a completely different person, and then I peeled a mask off at 7 p.m. and became another person. Man, I couldn't have said it any better. I've, I've been there, I've done that, and it's a, it's a terrible feeling, man. So I'm glad it's worked out for you, man. I mean, as, as I said, I really think you're one of the best dudes out there that uh, hasn't made it to the big show yet, and I really like the approach you're taking, man. Uh, you know, it seems like you know you're gonna, you know you're going to get there, but you're just going to kind of you know let it let it play out. You don't need to rush anything. But um, you're a big fight fan, I know. Did you check out the fights? Uh, did you get a chance to go to the fights in Ottawa, being that you're a Canadian? Oh man, actually, Ottawa is on the complete. It's like it, yeah, it's other like side of the LA world. In Miami. Yeah, it's like LA and Miami. The the difference in how far it is. It's it's really far away, Ottawa. But I did get to check out the fights. What do you think, man? I mean, Cowboy still got it, right? Yeah, man, he's a he's a monster. He actually came and uh, did some work over at our at our Muay Thai gym, Frank Lee's, when uh, when he was in town filming a movie. But um, apparently he's just like a, he's a monster, man. Even at, even with us, he was just sparring like rounds after rounds with with the guys. I wasn't there at the time, but they were like, "Yeah, he's he's legit as fuck." It's incredible, man, to see uh, to see him at this stage in his career. You know, like it seems like he's just really now. You know, with the birth of his son, it seems like he's just starting to take it seriously. I guess is the right word. But uh, yeah, man, it's it, it's crazy, man. It really is, but. I want to thank you for your time, man. Uh, this was fun. I appreciate it, and I want to uh, give you a few minutes here to shout out your coaches, sponsors, whatever you'd like. The floor is yours, KB. Absolutely, man. Um, okay. Thank you. i got to say, i got to say thank you to High Boosted Training Center. Uh, thank you to Frankly's Muay Thai and my striking coach, Kedro Noda. i got to say thank you to Shave Bears MMA and uh, Jeff Monomuro. Thank you to uh, Arc Pivotal and P- Pivotal Physiotherapy. Thank you, Revival Apparel. Thank you, uh, Laser Shear, Advanced Skin Rejuvenation, and um, Excel Athletics. Thank you all very much. Yeah, it was a pleasure, man. It was, a, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time as well. Oh, anytime, man. I, I truly mean that. I'm sure we'll be doing this again. And uh, for everybody listening, man, Unified MMA 37 Chaos, KB Bueller is fighting Cody Cron. And as I said, man, uh, I believe it's just a matter of time before you're at the big show. So people need to, to get on the, the page. Thanks, you're, you're, Thank you very much for your time. For sure. Take care, man.